If you want to learn how to create some awesome world designs in Inkscape, then this is the video for you. Let's begin with a neon world effect. First I'll go to the squares and rectangles tool and create a long thin rectangle. Then I'll grab the circular handle at the top right and drag it down as far as it will go to round the corners. Next I'll turn this into a path by going to path, object to path. And now I can go to the node tool and grab all of the bottom nodes, then join them into a single node by clicking this button up here. Next I'll go to the select tool and I'm going to duplicate this path by pressing ctrl D. Then I'll move the duplicate over here, scale it down some while holding shift and ctrl. And now I will click it to get the rotation handles and rotate it counterclockwise a bit. I'll duplicate this with ctrl D, press the V key to flip it vertically and the H key to flip it horizontally and move it down here. Next I'll go back to the squares and rectangles tool and create a thin rounded rectangle to fill in some space here. Now I'll select all of these, duplicate them with ctrl D, flip them vertically and horizontally and move them down here. Then I'll select everything. Alright now in order to apply the world effect to these objects, they need to have a lot of nodes. If I go to the node tool right now, we can see that they don't have many nodes at all. And actually I still have two rectangle objects here, which I need to turn into paths. So I'll go to path, object to path. Okay, and to add more nodes to these paths, with the node tool still active, I can press Ctrl A to select all of the nodes. Then I can go up here and click the insert new nodes button. Clicking it about six or seven times should give them enough nodes for the effect to work well. Now I'll go back to the select tool. All right, and another thing to know about the whirl effect is that it uses the center of the current view as the point from which to start whirling the selected objects. So if I want to start the whirl from the center of my current selection, I need to center the view around the selection. To do this easily, I can go to view, zoom, zoom selection, which I can also do by pressing the three key. Okay, and the whirl effect is actually an extension. And to get to it, I can go up to the extensions menu, then down to modify path, then whirl. If I check live preview here, we can see that it whirls the selected paths starting from the center of the view, but with a default whirl amount of only 5, it doesn't whirl that much. If I set this to something higher like 40 and press enter, I can get a really cool looking result. If I go too high with this, I might start getting some really crazy looking stuff going on and a lot of jagged edges. To fix this, I would first need to add even more nodes to the paths, but I think 40 looked pretty good. I can also change the direction of the whirl with this rotation is clockwise checkbox. Right, I'll click apply and close this out. I can now select the individual paths again and change the colors if I want. I'll select this one, then hold shift and select this one, and this one. Then I'll open the fill and stroke dialog with this button and I'll give these paths a light cyan fill. They're a bit too hard to see now. So I'll go to the squares and rectangles tool and create a large rectangle over all of this. And I'll sharpen the corners with this button. Now I'll give it a very dark blue fill. Then go to the select tool and click this button to send it to the bottom. Alright now I'll select a couple of the other world paths and give them a blue fill. Then I'll select the remaining red paths and give them more of a violet fill. Okay, and to add a neon effect to these paths, I'll first select them all and group them together by pressing Ctrl G. Then I'll duplicate the group with Ctrl D, click the lower selection one step button up here to put it below the other group, and at the bottom of the fill and stroke dialog, I'll give it a slight blur. Now I'll duplicate again. Click the lower selection button twice to put it below both of the other groups. Blur this one even more. And lower its opacity a bit. Okay, now I'll select the top group again and duplicate it. And I want to ungroup this by pressing shift Control g Then I'll turn it all into a single path by going to path, union. Make it white. And inset it a bit by going to path, inset. And maybe one more time. There we go. 
Another effect we can create with the world extension is one of those red and white candy cane worlds that are always popular around Christmas. To do this, I'll first go to the squares and rectangles tool and create a long rectangle. I'll give this a red fill and make sure the opacity is at 100%. Next, I'll turn this into a path by going to Path, Object to Path, then I'll switch to the Node tool, grab all of the bottom nodes, and join them into a single node by clicking this button. Alright, now I'm going to go up here and click this button to enable snapping, then click the arrow here, click Advanced Mode down here, and I'm going to enable snapping to object rotation centers. Next, I'll go to the Select tool, and click the path to get the rotation handles, then I'll grab its rotation center and drag it down here until it snaps to this cusp node. Alright, now I'll duplicate this with Ctrl D, then while holding either Ctrl or Alt, I'll rotate it 30 degrees. Okay, I'm going to select the first one again and duplicate it, and I'll just give this one a random fill color. Now I'll turn off snapping for the moment, then I'll go to the node tool, and select both of the top nodes, then I'll turn on this button up here, which will show the transformation handles for the nodes. And now I can grab one of the scale handles, hold shift, and drag them in a bit. Okay, now I'll go to the select tool, and select both of these paths. Then I'll go to path, difference, to cut the top path out of the bottom path. Alright, now I'll turn snapping back on. Then I'll select both of these paths and duplicate them. Then I'll rotate them 60 degrees. And I'll continue duplicating and rotating until I get a full circular shape. Alright, now I can select all of these paths. And because they're all the same color and I don't plan on changing the colors, I can just turn them all into a single path by going to Path, Union. I'll also need to add some more nodes, so I'll go to the Node tool, press Ctrl A to select all the nodes, then click the Insert New Nodes button about six times. Now I'll go back to the Select tool, press the 3 key to center the selection, then I'll go to Extensions, Modify Path, Whirl. I'll need to change the Whirl amount to something pretty low like 2. Or maybe 5. Perfect. Okay, now I can turn off snapping, then create a white rectangle over the part of the world that I want to keep, making sure to keep the corners of the rectangle inside of the world. Okay, now I'll go to the Select tool and click the lower selection one step button to put the rectangle below the world, then I'll duplicate the rectangle with the Ctrl D. Now I'll select all of these, open the Align and Distribute dialog with this button, then align the objects vertically and horizontally. Alright, now I'll select just the top rectangle and the world path, and go to Path, Intersection. We can also use the world extension on text. For this, I'll go to the text tool and create a text object. For the font, I'll choose something that has thick letters, like blue. And I'm going to go to the Fill and Stroke dialog and give this a linear gradient. I'll make the first stop cyan. For the other stop, I'll raise the alpha channel all the way up and make it a purple. Alright, now I'll go to the select tool and I'm going to duplicate this and bring it down here while holding control to keep them horizontally aligned. Now I'll duplicate both of them and move them down here while holding control. Okay, now if I select all four text objects, I can go to the align and distribute dialog and click one of these four buttons down here to distribute them equally. Alright, now in order to use the world extension on these, I first need to turn them into paths by going to Path, Object to Path. This actually turns them into groups of paths, which won't work with the extension, so I need to ungroup them all by pressing Shift, Ctrl, G. I also need to add some more nodes to the paths, so I'll go to the Node tool, press Ctrl, A to select all of the nodes, and click the Insert New Nodes button a few times. Now I'll go to the Select tool, Press the 3 key to center the view, then I'll go to Extensions, Modify Path, Whirl. To get a good result with this, I'll probably need to use something pretty high, like 100. And I can rotate all of this a bit if I want. And finally, I'll give this a dark gray background. Okay, so that's how we can create world designs in Inkscape. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.